We have a powerful new moon in Cancer. We're trying to break free from something. It's a very intuitive, very psychic moon. It's a powerful time for setting intentions for new beginnings. Hi everyone, Heather here with Astrology with Heather.com and I am back with another weekly forecast. This one is from Monday, July 5th, all the way through to Sunday, July 11th of 2021. And this week we still have some tensions being carried over from the fixed T-square between Mars, Saturn, and Uranus. And so expect the unexpected, expect things to be turbulent, and expect to come up against some unexpected frustrations. <laughs> However, that being said, we have a powerful new moon in Cancer brewing. This is finally ushering us out of eclipse season, which takes it down a couple of notches just from that alone. But this new moon is also coming into a supportive sextile with Uranus, which is providing an outlet for change via the new beginnings that are being seeded through our intentions at the time of this new moon. We also have the final square from Mercury to Neptune that we've been dealing with for a couple of months now because of the Mercury retrograde, which has been causing a lot of ambivalence, a lot of indecisiveness, a lot of fogginess and confusion, a lot of misinformation and deception to be floating around out in the ethers, in our own lives, in the public sphere, all of that. And so it's finally reaching this point of resolution at the start of this week. And once it finally moves on, um, the good news for that is Mercury is going to start to do some better things. And so we'll have better energy for signing contracts, for communicating, for submitting paperwork, for um, travel, for all of the mercurial things that we need to get moving on. After this week, Mercury will be a little bit more in the clear and it'll start to not only gain that forward momentum because it's direct and it's like really moving forward now, but it'll be out of that sort of nebulous energy of the Neptune square. And so, um, yeah, this week we have kind of a lot going on, but before we get into that, I just want to mention for those of you who are new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I create a new weekly forecast every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and so you never want to miss an important astrology update. Update. I also do different tutorials and things like that throughout the month. And so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're interested in learning more about astrology. Even if you're not new to my channel, the way that I structure my videos is I start with a five to 10 minute general forecast. Don't skip this because this provides an important context for the energy we'll be discussing more in detail in the forecast for all 12 signs. Speaking of which, when we do get into the forecast for all 12 signs, make sure you listen to your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign to get a more holistic overview review of the energy for the week ahead. Your rising sign will be the most predominant energy, your sun sign will be secondary, and the moon sign is important to listen to as well, although this energy will be a little bit more internalized and subjective. Finally, at the end of each video, I do a two to three minute overview of next week's energy so you can get even farther ahead in planning for the planetary energy. So stick around until the end if you're interested in that. And so getting back to the general forecast, so this new moon um, is is cooling things down a bit while things are heating up in other areas of our lives. And so this is where we can finally kind of um, reach this point of reset. I mean, we've been we've been through a lot the last couple of months. We've had a ton of really powerful eclipse energy. We've had Mercury retrograding and squaring Neptune and causing all sorts of havoc and confusion and, and chaos. And of course, we've had Saturn square Uranus come exact in June, uh, form a fixed T-square with, um, with Mars in July, which also that's being activated a little bit, you guys, because we'll have Venus actually coming into a square with Uranus on Thursday. And so that's still happening. That's still heating it up. Don't expect things to feel like calm and easy and like light and fluffy just yet. Next week, it'll lighten up a lot more. And as we get into August, it's going to be a much better energy. But again, it's still being activated over and over again, at least through the end of August. So we're going to have still turbulence. We're going to have still change. We're still going to have to be um, malleable. We're going to have to let go of our fixed ideas, our fixed uh, value systems, the things that we we're holding on for dear life <laughs> to try to maintain because they felt comfortable in our lives because we are going through that period of turbulence we are having to pivot and if you haven't watched last week's video where i speak really in depth about this fixed t-square make sure you do that it's still relevant this week and actually it's relevant really through the end of the month and so you can find that um, link right there and uh, definitely check that out after you watch this one but the main energy this week that's at least 
helping somewhat like i mentioned before is that um, new moon which is happening on friday it's happening friday evening here at least in my time zone it might be you know overnight for you or on saturday depending on where you live if you're in the uk europe or in australia uh, but this energy is a powerful time for setting intentions for new beginnings in relationship to the change that we've been really really desperately wanting to make there's been a lot of frustration building with a certain area of our lives with a certain foundation that we create that we found out was maybe not the best foundation. Maybe it was um, cracked. Maybe it was, um, you know, falling apart. Or maybe we didn't build the foundation we thought we built. Maybe we built the foundation for a cage instead of a home or a support system. And so we've been having to dismantle that in some way. And so this is really where we're trying to break free from something in our lives. And we're trying to start fresh. And we're trying to do things in new and excited it's exciting and innovative ways that we've never really done before but saturn is stalling us out <laughs> even though mars is calling is is causing us to really want to jump in and initiate and make those changes that saturn energy is bringing blockages venus in the mix this week you guys um this could be good and bad so venus is a benefic influence so it's not neutral and it's definitely not malefic and so it's not hurting um as much as some of the other planetary influences could be hurting however um you know it is activating a really tense energy and venus does associate with like relationships and reciprocity and so i would say that there could be some relationship hurdles there could be some separations um in relationships not just like romantic relationships but in general there could be a need to uh, separate yourself from a relationship from an interaction from an agreement from a dynamic um, that comes about through something that is either quite heavy or quite unexpected that throws you for a loop and causes you to have to change again um, and so that's a big energy this week but this new moon it's opposing pluto yes but it's also going to be in trine with neptune which is kind of in a wide sextile with pluto and it's going to be sextiling that uranus and so again it brings that outlet for change it's a very intuitive very psychic moon for you to gain information and insights through your own subconscious through um connecting with something bigger than you through psychic or intuitive hits um, through all of those different means right this isn't a logical time period this week we still have mercury squaring mars this is the time where you're going to have to feel things out intuitively and as long as you're doing that you'll be able to find an outlet you'll be able to find a way to make the changes that you need to make this week and so that's um the biggest benefit that i'm seeing and you know the energy is lightening up and so, you know, we're getting ready actually to migrate our cosmic community in just a little over a week here once the energy really opens up. And so that means that for those of you who have been waiting to access the cosmic community, we're almost ready to invite you back in. And so if you're ready to get astrological insights that you won't find anywhere else if you're ready to learn how to put your knowledge to use in your own life in a very real practical way if you're ready to gain access to my electional astrology guides so you can plan for success by utilizing the best energies each month and if you're ready to connect with a like-minded group of astrology lovers from all over the world you're in luck because we're going to be relaunching and reopening the cosmic community in august and i'm going to have a free gift for all of you to celebrate and so keep your eyes peeled for that um, but let's get back into the forecast for all 12 signs beginning of course with aries and with aries rising all right and so for aries and for aries rising um, there's some sort of turbulence going on here in the area of finance specifically or a change that you feel like you need to be making on a financial level that could be wanting to branch out into have more financial independence or to work more independently um, to create wealth for yourself in some way, but there's a change that needs to happen here when it comes to your material possessions, your wealth, and the way that you generate and create and utilize your resources. And so this new moon, if you sit with it, if you set those intentions, can give you an out, and that out can come through your family or through your home environment, or even maybe through transforming your experience so you can work from home or something along those lines. Um, this is a really great week for you to set intentions involving your home, family, property, real estate, things of that nature. And so, you know, if you're somebody who is looking to buy a home, renovate a home, move, if you're looking to add new additions to your family, that might come unexpectedly, actually, with the uh, 
T-square happening involving your fifth house. But um, if you're looking to start something new involving your parents, your family, involving your home, now's the time where you can set intentions. So long as you are using your intuition as a guide and you're not relying too heavily on uh, rational, logical thinking, and whatever it is that you're setting in motion in your home and behind the scenes can facilitate greater financial freedom moving forward, whether you realize it or not. For Taurus and for Taurus rising. So for Taurus, this energy is happening in your sign with the uh, fixed T-square. So you've been going through a lot of changes on a fundamental level across pretty much all areas of life. There's a lot of turbulence, a lot of upheaval, a lot of restless and unsettled energy. Um, however, this is a really good week for you to come back down to earth and have a little bit of a reset. Uh, when it comes to your mental state, when it comes to, this is a really great time to set intentions involving a really important uh, uh, communication that you need to have, a really important message you need to send out. This could be a really great time to set intentions around a new educational pursuit or an, or some sort of mindset work that you're doing. Um, I really do like this energy around education specifically. Like if there's something you've been wanting to break free from and change about your work or your career um, that you feel it like could change the entire experience of your whole life and, and your personal freedom, you know, this is a time where you might be able to um, engage in some sort of additional education around a topic that can give you more freedom and more mobility and help you further your career goals and plans. And so that could be something that you could use this energy for as well. Uh, this is a great new moon for connecting with a group of like-minded people, maybe behind the scenes or doing some sort of new moon gathering or circle or something like that because of the energy with Neptune in your 11th house. But in general, this is a reset. Um, where I would say that journaling or doing something very mental, but you know, doing it more intuitively could be very helpful for you in figuring out what you need to change in order to move forward or what you need to learn or teach or talk about in order to move forward and liberate yourself from whatever it is that's holding you back from being true to you uh, because you're breaking free from a lot of conditioning. You're working really hard to uh, create the career that you want to create. If you're somebody who's working, there are changes going on in the home. There are changes going on in your relationships. And now Now's a time where you can kind of finally get your thoughts together so long as you're not overthinking it or over rationalizing it. For Gemini and for Gemini rising. So for Gemini is this energy, this T-square is happening in your third, ninth, and uh, 12th house. And so this isn't the worst T-square energy, which we talked about last week. It's, you know, mentally you might feel unsettled in a lot of ways, um, but it's helping you. It's helping you quite a bit. Where this new moon is actually happening is in your second house. And so this is a time where if you've been working on transforming something, especially involving uh, debt, other people's money, taxes, inheritance, joint finances through marriage, insurance, something along those lines on a very material level. Now's the time where you can set intentions and set something in motion. And this is something that you have to kind of come to on your own um, and come to very intuitively. And if you allow your intuition to guide you, there could be a new opportunity that comes to you through your work. Um, this is something that you've been trying to maybe figure out rationally, but you there's been a lot of confusion or ambivalence or a lack of clarity around your career path and where things are going or around your relationship with people in positions of authority or the legacy that you're leaving behind after work. And so now's a time where you can get clarity on that. And, um, you know, financially there could be a plan that comes up or that comes to you from that intuitive space. That's quite viable. And so setting intentions for material gains, setting intentions to get clarity around your work and around your career path. Um, and all of those things can be very fruitful for Gemini this week. For Cancer and for Cancer Rising. So for Cancers, this energy is happening in your sign. And so um, especially if you are a Cancer Sun, Moon, or Rising, anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees, you're going to be feeling this extra intensely. <laughs> um, and so this is actually a positive thing, though. This is a cosmic reset. You've been going through maybe some turbulence, some change, some hardships, some stress or strain around your financial situation. There's also maybe been a little bit of... Um, uh, chaos going on in your social circle. It could even just be that your friends are stressing you out because they're messaging you and emailing you and calling you and you're getting a lot of, um, you know, frustration around that. But whatever it is that's coming up for you right now, now's a time where you can have a cosmic reset in all areas of life, especially if you are a cancer sun and it's your birthday this, birthday this week. This is going to be a major reset year where the entire year is going to bring things that are brand new 
that are um, beginnings that you'll look back on this year and you'll be like, wow, that's when it all started. <laughs> it all started, you know, around my birthday or it all started in, in 2021, 2022, you know, that solar return year, that was crazy. Um, that's kind of the, the vibe here for Cancer Suns. Uh, just in general though, this is a time where anything that you want to start, anything that you want to initiate for your own personal gain, your own personal volition, um, any Anything that you know involves and this is a good time for self-care specifically for cancer too um, so if you're setting intentions around self-care if you're setting intentions around learning something new or finding a new group of friends that are a little bit more supportive and stable now is a time where you can do that maybe they won't be so support or so stable but they'll be supportive and they'll be fun <laughs> and you'll break free from you know, any stagnant energy in the area of your social circle a little bit more easily this week. Um, but yeah, this is a really good time for you to turn inward. This is a very psychic time for cancers. You're going to be getting a lot of intuitive hits. You're going to be extra, extra sensitive this week. And so you're going to want to honor that sensitivity and give yourself some space. For Leo and for Leo rising. So for Leos, this energy is happening in your in your sign, but also in the 10th and in, your, in the 7th house for that fixed T-square. If you haven't already watched last week's video, definitely go back and do that because this is hitting you um, pretty intensely. And this is going to be a week where you're going to want to retreat. This new moon is happening in your 12th house. This is a good time to take a vacation, take a rest, take some time out. There's some changes that you want to make when it comes to your career, where you're frustrated with your current circumstances and you're having to pivot because there are hurdles coming in, usually from other people um, that are blocking you and telling you no and preventing you from being who you want to be and liberating yourself. When it comes to your career, your public reputation, your relationship with authority figures, maybe that's been kind of stifling or um, changing things up when it comes to the legacy that you leave behind after work if you're somebody who's retired or not working. Um, this energy though is uh, is definitely going to pull you inward and so this is a really good time to take a little bit of a retreat, uh, focus on your spiritual development, focus on your creativity, focus inward. Um, if you do that this week and set intentions from that space where you're coming from a deep intuitive space or if you literally just use this for rest um, and you kind of take yourself out of the craziness and chaos going on externally you'll have probably this like light bulb moment, right? And you'll know exactly what you need to change moving forward when it comes to your career. It's like you've been pushing, 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 and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, now I realize that I could do it this way. So um, yeah, so that's what's going on for Leos. For Virgo and for Virgo rising. So for you guys, this energy, the T-square is not hitting you quite as badly as some of the other signs. You have Uranus already in trine with your ascendant sun or moon, especially if you're a Virgo sun, moon, or rising near that 14th degree. I would say anywhere from like um, 10 to 18 degrees, you'll be feeling this the most. Um, but this new moon energy is, is causing a big reset in your um, 11th house. And so this is the house of friends, social networks, and people that you surround yourself with by choice. This is a really great time to spend time with friends who are very supportive, very nurturing, who you feel very comfortable around. Um, this is a really good time to examine your emotional comfort zones within your social circle. And this is a really great time where new ideas, new mindsets, um, a new perspective on life and on your current experience, especially if things have been extra stressful and extra hard on that day-to-day -day level, a new perspective can come in through your connections and your interactions with friends. Anything that you want to do involving group work or groups of people or anything you want to do to give back, uh, this week is a really great time for you to set those intentions. And this is a great time to have really compassionate, really uh, deep spiritual bonds and connections one-on-one. -on -one with people as well. For Libra and for Libra rising. So this energy is happening for you in your 10th house of career and public reputation. You're getting a cosmic reset in this area and an opportunity to set intentions for brand new beginnings uh, when it comes to your career. This is actually in a sextile with Uranus, which is in your 8th house, which has maybe been causing some turbulence or disruption or unexpected hurdles and roadblocks when it comes to joint financial ventures in business, uh, when it comes to joint financial uh, ventures in romance, when it comes to... Um, you know, your investments, your, um, 
uh, inheritance that could be part of it too. Um, that could also just be that there has been some like fear and anxiety coming up through um, your previous your previous experiences being kind of reactivated or triggered in some way, and that's been unsettling. Whatever it is that's coming up for you, especially the, on the financial level. Um, this is a week where, you know, a new career development could take hold that could benefit you financially through maybe investors or through um, a financial connection to somebody in business. And um, this is a really good time to set intentions around those themes as well. This is also a really great time to enhance your creativity with the work that you're doing and what it is that you're putting out there in the world. Uh, so that's something that you can contemplate as well. <clears throat> For Scorpio and for Scorpio rising. So for Scorpios, this T-square has been hitting you pretty directly. So if you haven't already watched last week's video where I dive really deep into this fixed T-square, I highly recommend doing so because this is gonna still be impacting you for a couple more weeks. And really it's impacting you all year long. And so there's been some chaos going on involving um, potential changes going on in your marriage or in your relationships or um, maybe a new relationship coming in that's causing uh, a little bit of disruption and maybe there's some additional hardship going on when it comes to your home, your family, your property, or your work in respect to relationship changes or the dynamics changing when it comes to important contracts or agreements with your work or with your home environment, like a lease or a mortgage or something along those lines too. Um, whatever it is that's been coming up for you, you can kind of step outside of it. This is actually a really great week if you have the ability to do so, to go on a little bit of a trip. So to kind of pull yourself away from everything that's going on and to spend time kind of in contemplation in a foreign or different environment in order to gain perspective on your experience. If you do that with your partner, if you've been having disruptions or trouble in your partnership, this is a week where that can be resolved quite easily through uh, just getting away, right? This is a really great week to get away. This could also be you setting intentions to start something new this month involving um, a higher educational pursuit, involving uh, getting some additional education or teaching or publishing or something along those lines. And so that could be a really fruitful energy for you to focus on too. And this is just a good energy for Scorpios in general to reconnect with your joy and to gain a new sense of perspective on um all of the changes and all of the struggles that you've been having over these past couple of months, it's kind of like you're able to pull yourself out of it and just enjoy yourself a little bit more, especially at the end of this week around Friday when we have this new moon. So into the weekend will be a good time to engage in that. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, there is a new moon brewing in your eighth house, which is the house of debt, joint finances. Um, it's the house of death and rebirth. It's the house of deep psychological issues and traumas. It's the house of the occult. And so there's something new that's brewing in this area. Maybe you're um, you know, starting to study occult sciences. Maybe you're re ready to dive a little bit deeper into past trauma, pa past wounds, past um, psychological issues that have come up for you and you're ready to finally let go of old addictions you're ready to finally heal through that and move forward um, this is also a really great week for setting intentions to um, create something really beautiful for yourself um, when it comes to your home your family your property even if you need money or investments for that to happen or especially if you need money or investments for that to happen this is something that you can kind of start setting in motion there's been a lot of frustration around your work especially your day-to-day -day work habits and routines your relationship with your coworkers and your work environment in general General, where things have been feeling very frantic, very um, all over the place, but also very heavy. Uh, there's something coming in with this new moon that will be unfolding this month, it could be involving your partner's resources. And so maybe your partner has enough resources where you can kind of take it, take a little break or take some time off. Maybe you get someone um, investing in your business or your company. And so you're able to start transitioning your side hustle into a real kind of, you know, true business, or maybe, you know, you just get a little bit of a bonus or unexpected money or a payout and that alleviates some of the pressure. Uh, so you have some more wiggle room there. Uh, this, is a good time for all of those things and so uh, yeah that's what's going on for Sagittarius for Capricorn and for Capricorn rising so for Capricorn this energy is happening in your uh, seventh house with this new moon and you know this um, this t-square the fixed t-square hasn't been hitting you quite as negatively especially if you're a Capricorn Sun moon or rising anywhere from 10 to 18 degrees this 
this Uranus energy has been trining your ascendant sun or moon. And so that actually has been um, kind of a liberating experience where you've been connecting more with your joy, where you've been feeling a little bit more free in certain areas, even if you've been feeling more stifled and repressed in other areas like finances. <laughs> um, but this is a really good week for you to connect romantically with somebody like your, um, your significant other romantic partner in a way that's new, exciting, different, innovative that you've never really tried before. Um, this is also a really great time to deepen your intimacy through open and honest and compassionate communication. Uh, this is a really great time to facilitate a deep soul connection with somebody else. And this is also a time where if you're not connected, if you don't have, um, romantic partnership in your life, you can set intentions to create, um, that experience in your world. And that's something that actually could come up for you this, this month as a result of this new moon energy in general, your one-on-one -on -one interactions with anyone in all of your relationships will become much more compassionate and much more exciting, um, and much more pleasant throughout the remainder of this month. And so that is good news for Capricorn. For Aquarius and for Aquarius rising. So for Aquarius, this T square, this fixed T square is happening in your sign. And so if you haven't already watched my video from last week's forecast where I talk about the fixed T square, definitely go back and do that because it's still affecting you. It's going to continue to affect you for at least a couple more weeks. And really it's impacting you all year long in one way or another. And so you're going to want to go back and listen to that. But um, the new moon energy is happening in your sixth house, which is the house of health, work, and daily routines. There could be something new that you want to initiate um, that could actually funnel some money into your second house almost like magically and so you could have a new work-related project that comes up this month you could be wanting to initiate a new kind of project with work you could have a new connection a new work-related connection or new clients coming in um, this could just be a really powerful energy where on a day-to-day -day level, you can start to create what you want to create to liberate yourself um, from mundane, routine, kind of um, oppressive experiences that are going on in your home life, your family life, and also when it comes to your career. And so this is a good week to set intentions for career goals and plans. And also, you know, it's getting a better work-life balance because that could be a source of frustration right now for you too. And finally, for Pisces and for Pisces rising. So for Pisces, this T-square energy, it hasn't been hitting you quite as negatively as some of the other signs. There could have been some health stuff. Your day-to-day -day life is probably a little bit more hectic, um, but you're probably having a lot of really interesting and exciting new ideas, exciting communications coming in, um, and your relationships are probably shaking up and changing, but in a positive way. Uh, this new moon actually facilitates a lot of positivity for Pisces and Pisces rising. And so this new moon, especially if you are anywhere from, um, what have I been saying? 10 to, no, not 10, <laughs> um, uh, 15 through um, 21 degrees in the sign of Pisces and even beyond that. So 23 degrees is where Neptune is and that's being activated by a trine. So I would go as, so far to say, you know, 15 to 25 degrees, you're going to be feeling this in a very positive way. And so um, this is a really good time to reconnect with your passions, to reconnect with your creativity, to reconnect with anything and everything that brings you joy. Uh, this is a really great time to do something creative or intuitive, to tap into your spirituality to tap into hobbies that allow you to kind of be more in flow and out of your head um, and that's going to be a really powerful experience for you that can open up a lot of doors this is also a really good time to set intentions for new beginnings involving your children if you have any or children in general um, and this is also a time where um, romance could come in maybe unexpectedly through a message or a communication via the internet or something like that um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's long lasting but it, it you could have a little fling coming in and so that's something you can set intentions for as well all right and so that's the energy for um, all 12 signs let's get into next week's forecast which is actually a lot nicer and so this is the forecast for uh, July 12th through the 18th. And this is actually some really good vibes. Things are looking up uh, next week. And so we're finally kind of moving out of that really crunchy, really turbulent, really intense zone of the fixed T-square. Um, we're having some really good positive astrological uh, alignments coming up next week, including Mercury, Trine, Jupiter, which finally our brains come back online. Like that's a big one that I've been waiting 
looking for. Um, we can finally start doing those mercury things. We can finally start signing on the dotted line. We can finally start rationalizing things and thinking much more clearly again. Uh, that Mars Venus conjunction in Leo, very creative, very inspired, very passionate coming in. Um, again, that does activate the fixed T square. So you know, it's not um, the lightest and fluffiest of, of Venus energies that we could have, but, um, you know, it's also not the worst. And so, yes, we still do have some of that fixed T-square turbulence next week, but it's moving away from being exact by the time it hits that Mars-Venus conjunction. It's, it's, kind of far out actually so it's not going to be um, nearly as detrimental as it could be at 19 degrees versus if it would have happened a little bit earlier on um, and we also have the sun trying neptune and so like a lot of these energies with mercury and with neptune that square that's been going on for the past few weeks are being alleviated and things are finally opening up and we're feeling inspired and we're feeling more grounded and we're feeling much more clear-headed and we're able to finally move forward and so um, I'm liking the energy next week. The week after that, it gets even better. And then as we move into August, as I mentioned at the start of this video, things start to open up a lot more. So um, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you share this video with your friends if you feel like they could benefit from the information that we talked about this week. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.